Hello everyone, it's Challenger, and this video is about the Navy and Aces High. I got the idea for this video because as I was gunning on the cruiser of the fleet, someone asked uh, what the range was to the target, which is ridiculous if you're a gunner. So let's talk about that, but, but first, uh, a few details oh, I'll offer up here. Um, what you're looking at right here is the Essex-class carrier as it appears in the game. In addition to launching any American or Japanese Navy plane, carrier-borne that is, uh, the carrier also has 5-inch, 40mm, 20mm guns. It can launch LVTs and even PT boats. Uh, during the actual war, the plan was to float more than 30 of these carriers. And I think they might have gotten to a number something around 28. And uh, also during the war, not a single one of these carriers was ever sunk. No two ships of the same class, in this group anyway, uh, were ever exactly alike. The cruiser that leads the group is a Baltimore-class heavy cruiser. And the number, the whole number anyway, is that of the USS Pittsburgh. The heavy cruiser type is considered to be the smallest ship by the Navy, capable of independent operations. Men and Aces High, they, they die kind of easy. The four destroyers are the Fletcher class heavy destroyers, which share the motto to kill or to be killed, and they fulfill that every day. The group that comprises the carriers offers the chance to engage in two different types of war. There is the in country type war, and then there is also the rolling thunder type. The two different war types offer various operations, tactically speaking. Uh, the in-country type operation involves defensive operations, which include replenishment and close support. This is the simpler form of war. It's a little easier to engage for a carrier group anyway, is uh, in-country. And because it is in relatively safe waters for the most part, that's where the in-country part comes from. In Aces High, we call replenishment, resupply. And the close support concept comes from protecting another asset like an airfield. The idea of rolling thunder comes from being mobile and is an offensive type of operation as compared to the defensive role of in-country actions. This type of action should keep the carrier in stealth, but it almost never works out that way. For one, most carrier operations begin inside of the enemy radar. Probably they shouldn't. And any aircraft on the deck of the ship will alert the enemy base. So the only thing to keep things stealthy is to eliminate any ability to respond, which of course is nearly impossible. All it takes is one set of eyes on the carrier, and you're going to have an endless supply of bombers inbound until it's all gone. I mentioned the difficulty in keeping an aircraft carrier stealthy. The main problem with keeping the carrier stealthy, of course, is the concept of too many cooks in the kitchen. And no two people in any particular country will see the same solution to any tactical situation. Uh, my intention with this whole video is to show how to eliminate any object without causing an alert, such as an aircraft uh, coming up on the carrier deck. You, you can use the guns on the cruiser to eliminate the entire airfield. Every object on there can be hit easily from the cruiser, even from the edge of the radar. You don't have to be able to see what you're shooting at in order to eliminate it. And of course, if you're watching the video, so is the enemy, so keep that in mind for a moment, because uh, the quality of combat will probably change if enough people get to see this. Another problem in keeping the location of the carrier stealthy or unknown is that people tend to jump the first base they come to with a CV. It, carriers, after all, don't move very quickly. 
and so uh, the tendency is to move it to the first base and attack from there. That's never a good idea. The reason is because the enemy expects it. The first time an attack comes at a field where you know the most likely access is water, uh, they're going to come looking for a carrier. So the idea is to keep the carrier out of view, protect it with uh, combat air patrol cap, and um, well, as you know, you probably never have enough guys, so cap is not a likely uh, benefit that the carrier is going to be able to uh, enjoy. Uh, so I'm planning on losing your carrier, and it uh, it really is that simple. That's just the way it's the way it is. Most of the people that uh, use boats tend to use them as uh, flak platforms and mobile radar. That's probably because they don't know how to use the fleet guns, and that's uh, the next best thing. <laughs> uh, at least it does have radar, and it does have flak. Unfortunately, the problem with flak is it's automatic flak, and it's not accurate. It doesn't actually kill anybody, hardly. So the idea of a flak platform and uh, using a fleet as a mobile radar platform is really, really bad. It's like saying to the enemy that you don't care about your airfields. And worse, it will create bad habits in how you use the carriers to begin with. I prefer to use the carriers as roaming maelstroms. But there is always someone else that has their own plan. So I will now show you how to use the big guns so that you understand what it is that I try to do. Now, I'm not saying anybody's stupid or that they don't have the same concept. It's just that um, when I see a carrier being used as a flak platform or to fill in the gap between radars, it, it just appears to be a ridiculous uh, concept to me. The cruiser, heavy cruiser in Aces High, is fitted with nine eight-inch guns, all capable of being manned. Well, since there's only three turrets, that means three people can man them. There are two turrets forward and one aft. A single broadside from all three turrets, which strike, is capable of killing an opposing cruiser. And three broadsides will sink a carrier. The procedure for entering the gun of the cruiser is to go to the hangar, same way you pick an airplane or a tank, uh, and select the gunship or field. And this will take you to the position selection screen where you may choose between 8 inch, 5 inch, 40 millimeter, 20 millimeter. And it is the 8 inch position that you want, of course. Once you've made that selection, hit the H launch button or type dot fly in the text buffer and hit enter. Once in the gun position, you want to hit control Q to enter C mode. And of course, this is assuming that you're shooting at a ship. And once in C mode, the mouse will allow you to move the white crosshairs relative to the position of what I call a stadia or ranging sight but only when the clipboard is not visible. I typically move the crosshairs so they are visible as I am using the yellow ranging scale to aim with. Well, white crosshairs can be used as a windage gauge or lead estimator when the, re the lead exceeds that of the, uh, of the ranging scale. Um, because it's rather narrow, it only gives you about uh, one carrier length windage. The yellow ranging scale is used by aligning the lower edge of the stadia lines with the water line of the target ship. And this gives you the precise range to the target but you still have to adjust for target motion of course. If the target is moving towards you or away at an odd angle then the firing solution becomes a little bit more complex but you can usually sort it out just by uh, seeing where your rounds fall. And uh, the only solution for more complicated solutions is uh, experience behind the gun, which you can get rather quickly. In fact, you can do it while you're manning the gun, but of course, if the opposing gunners, if there are any, have more experience than you are, that gets to be a problem pretty quick. Now, this same approach works for land mode, so if you have to use Shift-Q to enter that mode. 
In either mode, you can click on the map of the clipboard to set an initial aiming point. Although, to get that in, to function properly in C mode, you need to hit uh, Shift Q first, and then go back into Control Q C mode, and the approximate position will already be ranged. This really helps in establishing a beginning aim point for shore batteries, for instance, radar and towns, since these objects are open in notorious positions of the map. Will know you have the proper aim point for fixed objects because of the center stadia line of the ranging scale will be fixed upon the object of interest and thereafter it will remain in position even when the ship moves. Now, what I mean by this is if you're pulling forward and back on the stick, uh, if the scale is moving side to side and, you're, and you can uh, center it by, by pushing forward or pulling back on, the, on your joystick, and when it stops moving relative to the position of the object that you're aiming at, your target, in other words, you know you have it centered. That's not always true because you could be aiming at a point behind the target slightly, so a little bit of adjustment may be needed, but it won't be too bad. I think you can figure it out anyway. From a from a shore battery, if the uh, if the elevation is quite a bit different from that of sea level when you're shooting down at a ship, you're going to have to aim nearer. In other words, the bottom of the stadia lines are not going to be able to align with the waterline of the boat. And of course you're never shooting further up except from a CV and you're not in C mode when you're shooting to land, so you don't have to worry about that. But I see this quite commonly when firing down from a position of an elevation advantage, for instance. Um, and so you have to keep that in mind. Now the uh, the only remaining mode for these guns is the manual mode, or just hit Q. This is usually only handy when firing at very close range, uh, under 3K. You don't really want to do that in a boat because uh, that means even a single 5-inch gun, or especially the 40 millimeters of the opposing ship, 20 millimeters even, can do significant damage to you at less than 3K. And C mode also works while the shooter is in the shore battery. Mm, can't really say that there's any reason for you to be in C mode from the shore battery though, but there are times when Q should be used because, again, you're shooting at extremely close range. Okay, so here we are on the carrier, and we want to hit A22 over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in the gun. The 8 inch gun that is, that one right there. And click H for the hanger. Now I need to go into land mode. But first, I want to click on the map of my target. Now, what I haven't told you until now is how to do this. Okay? There's two ways to go about it. You can visit the field and learn the locations of all the objects because they don't move from field to field. Uh, or you could create uh, it, something like a PDF file of all the locations of everything on the map. Now, the reason that I know about this is because somebody in my squad years ago came to me and they said, how are they doing this? I can't even see the CV, and they're hitting every object on this field. Well, this is how you do it. You come up on the field, offline for instance, and you move something like a Jeep, or some other vehicle close to the target that you want to hit and you learn that location that way what you can do is you can take a screenshot of it and save it in PDF form so you can load it up later on your iPad or even your cell phone I guess these days just about anything will work but anyway what you do is you zoom in on the map like this now you can see the icon for this field and I know that the radar is right about there. So when I go into land mode, it's pretty much locked on target. Okay? So what I'm going to do is drop my clipboard so that I can move that to where I can see, then raise the clipboard again so it won't move when I move my mouse. I get the mouse pointer instead. Now, um, I have this mapped to my joystick, 
so that I can change my views with my thumb. I don't typically use the mouse as an aiming device uh, for objects on a field like this. But um, I can use the keyboard, just hit the button, you know, to fire. And we'll wait while that round goes down range and kills the radar. I'm going to move to the radar viewpoints so you can see what I mean. Now, shooting at the radar may seem like a really good idea. After all, this is just about what everybody goes for first off when they're attacking a field, right? Well, the problem is that uh, shooting the radar is a dead giveaway, but there's a fleet nearby. I mean, it's a sea base, basically. You know, it's not a port, but it's close to the water. And... If there's no other base around and you knock the radar out first thing, they're going to know, hey, there's a CV over there. So what you really want to do, to begin with, is to aim at the ammo bunkers. I'm going to move this out of the way here. And, um, they die pretty easy. Sometimes it takes two or three different shots, depending upon the... Uh, how accurate your uh, designation point on the map is. Now if you had, let's say you had uh, the airfield mapped out on a grid coordinate system and you knew how many yards it was from each object, because they're in an east-west alignment here, or north-south alignment, you could, uh, you could estimate how far you had to turn the turret. Because if you look up here in the upper left-hand corner, you can see when I move from left to right it changes, and the up and down it changes in yardage. So if you knew the yardage offset and could do something like trigonometry you know, in your head, you could figure out how to change the position of the gun, uh, target area, uh, by the numbers. It's not hard to do it this way either, but, um, you know, some people have a harder time uh, using numbers than they do uh, the, like the PDF or screenshot method that I mentioned. It's just, uh, it's going to suit more people better, I think. Okay. Um, but anyway, I happen to know that the ammo bunker is right around in this area. There is a bomber hangar here and there is a fighter hangar about over here. So I've clicked on that extra uh, ammo bunker right there. And this is going to go pretty quick, I'm pretty sure. The sight picture is uh, what we see when we look through the uh, gunnery view toward the target area. And you can see how far those two, far, those, uh, two fires are aligned from the target area that I'm shooting at now. And I can tell you that it's probably about one and a half K distance from the ammo bunker to the new ammo bunker, second one that I'm shooting at. When those rounds all landed together, they did not disperse. shooting at an ammo bunker or a radar, you want a little bit of dispersal, or even a gun, 
But if you're aiming at a hanger, you do want them all to be together, but you want to be spot on the target. You don't want to miss. And there's the second ammo bar. Anyway, I guess I could show you, well, I could show you some more shore battery action, but I think this is probably enough to get you started and uh, using the ships a little bit more. Give us a like, subscribe, and come back and see us later.